think that means we should be live and hopefully you can see me on the screen. Perhaps uh, chat could let me know that they are seeing and hearing me. Let's get some hype in chat. As the streamers say, I can see the numbers, numbers going up. So that means people are pull, pulling in. So that's great. There we go. There's the hype. Great to see you all. OK, well, hello, I am Tom Wilmot. I'm the CEO of Human Made and welcome to our AI for WordPress event. We're very excited to be putting this on today. We've got a fantastic lineup of speakers ahead of us, some of whom are going to be sharing behind the scenes looks of the work they've been doing to improve their WordPress products and services uh, with AI. We've got some exclusive announcements uh, of new AI powered features and products. And we've got plenty of discussion and reflections on what the future for WordPress is going to look like uh, as AI sweeps through us all. Before, um, before I get into all of that, there's some housekeeping, which I will go through. Uh, we're using Crowdcast, which you've probably seen. Uh, and so um, as we uh, move through the sessions, we're going to try our best to pull everyone along with us. That's a feature of Crowdcast. And so if you stick around uh, to the end of a session, you should be automatically pulled through to the next one. Um, if for whatever reason that doesn't work, uh, then remember, you can always just go back to the lobby uh, and navigate to, to whichever session is currently live. Um, and if you need to refresh or or go away and rejoin or something, that's the best way to to get back to the session that you should be in. Another thing to be aware of is that the chat, uh, which I can see you all in uh, at the moment, is um, uh, is also per session. Um, and so, uh, if you are in a chat uh, and uh, having a discussion, and uh, the current session ends. Uh, maybe you want to navigate to the new session in a new tab or something just so you can continue the conversation that you're in. Just a little pro tip there for you. Uh, talking of chat over on the right hand side of the screen, alongside the chat, there's uh, there's also QA and polls uh, features, which uh, I think we have some plans to use throughout the sessions today. So keep an eye on those. Um, We've got quite a tight schedule. We've got a lot of a lot to get through, a lot of great speakers. Um, and so I think it's unlikely that we'll have time for live questions with the speakers uh, during their sessions. Um, and so uh, I think the best way to uh, to ask questions is just to ask them in chat. And um, there's lots of really intelligent people in the chat um, who I'm sure will be able to, uh, to, to answer questions for you. Also, um, we're hoping that some of the speakers will be able to hang around after their sessions. Um, in chat to answer questions. Uh, and we've also got folks from Human Made uh, in chat to um, give us a wave, Human Maders, um, who are more than happy to, to answer questions and signpost you in the right direction uh, if things uh, get a bit janky. Mm -hmm. Finally, we're also going to be recording all the sessions. Uh, and so uh, if you do miss anything or you have to drop off for whatever reason, don't worry. Uh, we'll share the recordings uh, with everybody. Um, after the after the session has finished today. Um, OK, so what's what's the event about? I guess over the past few months, it's really started to feel like we're in the early stages of a, of a major technology platform shift uh, driven by a lot of the recent breakthroughs uh, that we've probably all been enjoying and getting excited about uh, in AI. Um, and like the shifts that have come before it, uh, mobile or social media or cloud, I think many feel that AI is going to reshape the landscape quite broadly. Uh, and profoundly. And so I think the question for us is how can WordPress adapt to this coming change? What opportunities does it present to make WordPress even better? We've been diving into these questions quite deeply at Human Made as part of our work, helping some of the world's largest companies build their digital platforms on WordPress. We've been doing that internally through our own R&D, uh, which uh, you'll have seen us sharing openly uh, over the past few weeks. Uh, and which Joe is going to demo in a bit more detail uh, in a few minutes. So I'm excited for that. Um, also in collaboration with several of our clients who are excited by the capabilities they're seeing uh, already make their way into some other products uh, that, that we all know and love. We see Google and Microsoft um, shipping some really useful AI features, uh, co-pilots, content augmentation, things like that. Um, and uh, a lot of our clients are really keen and excited to see some of those things come to WordPress. They can see them. Uh, already be be really useful to, to them and their teams. 
at HumanMade, we believe really deeply in the power of open source and the value of the WordPress ecosystem. And just like our previous work to develop the REST API or our early adoption of Gutenberg uh, as the block editor uh, with our enterprise clients, I think we're at our happiest uh, when we can play a part in uh, building the future of this amazing platform uh, that we all use and love uh, together. And that's really what today's about for us. Um, we wanted to bring together and highlight all the work and explorations that are happening across the WordPress ecosystem at pace. There's a lot happening already and quickly. Uh, I also just want to say that I'm particularly proud of the team who've worked tirelessly to get this event off the ground uh, in a really short amount of time, actually. You know, AI development has been moving fast and uh, we felt it was really important that as an ecosystem, we're exploring this early uh, and broadly, and that's meant moving moving with, uh, with, with similar pace. Uh, and so with that, I want to thank you all for being here. I hope you find this as enjoyable to watch uh, as we're having putting it on. Um, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to do my first little bit of uh, crowdcast administration. I'm going to bring Joe up onto the main stage. Welcome, Joe, and he is going to uh, oh. kick us off for the day. Hi, Joe. Um, so Joe's the CTO of Human Made. Um, hello. Can you hear us? Uh, and he's going to be demoing yes. some of the R&D work we've been doing, um, exploring the possibilities that are opened up by integrating all of these new AI capabilities into WordPress. So, uh, Joe, I shall remove myself from the stage and uh, and you can take it away. All right, thank you. Let me uh, see if I can work out my screen sharing. It's the main stressful bit. Okay, hi, everybody. Okay, I think. I have everything that I need. I may be glancing to the left slightly because my notes are over there. Um, okay, welcome everybody. Uh, today, um, I'm talking about accelerating the future of AI in WordPress, and that is a punny title, which you will see shortly. Um, my name is Joe Hoyle, as Tom said. I'm the CTO co-founder with uh, Tom and Noel of Human Made. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about some AI uh, topics and, and also uh, get stuck into some live demos of which um, I will be, uh, yeah, hoping everything goes smoothly for. Um, okay, so a quick AI primer. Maybe this will be useful for people throughout the day as uh, there'll be a lot of jargon and buzzwords thrown around and things like that. Um, there's, there's kind of a, uh, a Russian doll uh, of of terminology here, and I like to kind of think at the top you have just uh, arti artificial intelligence generally, or artificial general intelligence, and within that we have machine learning and different types of machine learning. Um, and and specifically, what I'm going to really focus on today is generative AI because I think that's probably the most interesting, directly applicable field of AI to apply to WordPress, the CMS websites in general. But but it's not the only one. Um, but that's kind of where I'm going to focus. And generally, um, over the last year, we've seen generative AI in uh, images, things like Dali, Midjourney, uh, Stable Diffusion. And that is generally using uh, GAN image generation models. Um, there are also other types of models that you can use for images, but that's kind of the current state of the art. And then large language models, which has given rise to things like ChatGPT, which um, yeah, it's, it's just had an explosive uh, kind of adoption over the past uh, six months plus, really, and in terms of everything that's been able to create. And generative AI does not just mean, um, you know, writing stories for you, creating images. That's also things like chatbots and answering questions and, and that kind of thing. Um, and I, I, I think that's probably uh, enough of a primer. Now, AI or LLM specifically, uh, there's a bit of a spectrum of belief in terms of how special these are. Is this just a party trick of of a computer, or is it like you know we we uh, are dealing with a already super intelligent um, you know uh, uh, person behind uh, ChatGPT or something like that? Often it it, it does feel that way, um, and I think it's somewhere in uh, in in the middle really. Um, <laughs> I, I think it, it is a bit of a party trick in some senses, right? What these large language models generally do, where they're sequentially um, giving you an, uh, a word or a token at a time to spell out sentences. And that is 
generally a little more superficial, I would say, than how humans kind of construct a worldview and a model and then try and describe with language. LLMs go directly just to the language. Um, but also there's quite a, an amazing emergence of intelligence that still comes out of that. And I think anybody that's played around with these tools long enough um, understands that uh, it it is far surpassing a kind of just gibberish string of words. It's really able to synthesize and uh, uh, you know recharacterize ideas and, and and mash things together and that kind of thing, which is um, uh, which is uh, uh, yeah I don't know some 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 kind of balance of those two. I think ultimately we're definitely not at super intelligence yet, but also I think it'd be wrong to dismiss large language models purely off of like a uh, you know this is just a glorified markov chain that that you know spits out gibberish um but because they're not perfect there's definitely caveats to bear in mind uh for example there's no inherent logic really behind uh the the text that a large language model may be giving you so there's uh, where where humans like i say generally have a model of the world and you know logically how things fit together and how they will not contradict each other and then we would use language as a way to kind of you know externalize and express those ideas that's not really what large language models are doing so it's really worth bearing that in mind when when using them um and because of that facts can be hallucinated as well they can you know make up uh a, a good amount of things or or uh you know misunderstand things that that kind of thing for example you know if, say joe hoyle was born in 19 uh 1989 versus uh joe hoyle was born in 1998 or to a language model those look really quite similar and those could quite easily kind of one slips into the other but in reality in you know that that very small change in language or associations of numbers um, really has a very big impact in in reality and uh, models can't necessarily appreciate that difference um, the information in them can also be very out of date now that is changing a little bit with uh, things like google bard which can incorporate much more up-to-date information directly into the model as it progresses but even so even if they are able to provide you factual information that was true at one point that may not be um, uh, still relevant or, or still correct um, and also models can uh, have a lot of bias in them. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is because they're generally trained on, you know, half of the contents of the internet. And that is created by people. And there's a huge amount of bias in that content. Um, so that will obviously make its way into the model in terms of how it generates content. Uh, and also the way that the models are trained and aligned and correct is, is also done by people in this. There's obviously bias within that as well. So um, I think that kind of makes the the field generally um, at the moment really work best in more of a supervised context where uh, the AI is providing uh, help and assistance and idea generation and, and things like that. Um, uh that that's kind of at, at the moment i think where these uh capabilities are, are best used um in autonomous fashions it's it's a little more uh difficult because they have all of these inaccuracies and biases and you know are not able to do math and things like that um in any kind of autonomous setting it's it's understandable that people would would find that quite scary um so in terms of building things with AI uh, and uh, build, building product solutions, you know, it's a lot of what human made does. Um, there's really a spectrum of how deep you need to kind of go to understand the full stack of, of AI to uh, that, that could be anything from, you know, using APIs, which is uh, what's really happened over the past year or so is uh, the APIs for AI become so easy to use that now there's been an explosion of of products adopting those capabilities, but you can obviously go a lot more deeper than that. You can train your own models for your own domain with the uh, you know specific knowledge and language that, that you may want to build a product around. Um, you can host your own models. There's a good amount of open source models that are good at targeted specific things. You can be uh, you know setting up your own infrastructure and you know uh, writing Python and everything to to appropriately use those. Or you can go kind of all the way down to programming the neural networks and, and all of that. And this is like any technology that comes along. There is a, a depth to it. And you don't need to understand it to the, the um, let's say, the most base layer, just as when we're uh, 
building websites. Um, if you're, uh, you know, programming for WordPress, you don't necessarily need to understand PHP in depth. You, you certainly don't need to understand C that PHP is written in. You definitely don't need to understand machine code and you don't need to understand how a processor works. Uh, and, it, and it's already got to the, the level with um, AI capabilities where you can use them at a very high level. And, and again, that kind of really has democratized the landscape to allow anybody to, to take uh, advantage of these um, capabilities. I want to talk a little bit about open source because WordPress is obviously, you know, one of or the strongest value of WordPress is open source. And that's the kind of philosophy that is built around as well. And what we see in a lot of these state of the art AI models is uh, they're not open source, they're proprietary and everybody's a little bit cagey around them. There's a lot of money involved, all of that. So things like uh, ChatGPT, even OpenAI, despite the name, MidJourney, Google Bard, et cetera, are uh, certainly industry leading, but also closed source. And that um, is uh, can, can be a difficult thing to, to weigh up against uh, the values of WordPress and what the future of WordPress may be and how it can incorporate those. Um, but nonetheless, if you actually look at the open source space, it's actually coming along very well. Meta somewhat recently released their uh, Llama model for um, language and the weights subsequently also leaked for that. Stability AI have been uh, in the cutting edge of, of, of AI generally, but open source AI certainly. And recently released a stable LM and, and stable Vicuna for chatbots and things like that. So the, the open source space is um, also progressing very well. And uh, it also looks like open source is doing a much better job of creating much smaller models, like in the region of, you know, 10 to 100 megabytes that can run on much more basic hardware. So there's a much more um, kind of... Uh, uh, lowering the bar for the amount of people that can self-host and self-run these things. Um, and <clears throat> in areas where you might want an AI to do much more specific tasks, uh, you don't necessarily need an all-knowing, all-seeing uh, bot like ChatGPT. Um, it could be that in the future, WordPress is able to directly integrate open source uh, models into the software to do, to help you with specific tasks and things like that. So I think there is a, a bright future there for uh, open source and, and AI. But you know, typically what we see in technology is the bleeding ed edge is proprietary, and then it is um, commoditized fairly quickly into open source, and, and that can become the dominant player. So that's kind of what I hope happens here. OK, so we're going to do some live demos. I uh, hope these are going to go smoothly because, uh, yeah, I don't have a backup. Um, <laughs> so, so I hope my internet and everything holds up well. Uh, so HumorMade has been experimenting with a bunch of capabilities that AI can provide. Some of those we have put into productized things. Some are prototypes. Some are specific for uh, client implementations and enterprise use cases and things like that. Um, OK, so for this demo, um, I'm going to use the uh, fantastic uh, Insta WP um, to quickly get a WordPress site. If anybody hasn't used this, I would highly recommend it. Um, I can literally just click Add New Site and Create Site. And there we go, it's done. Click Login. Um, uh, and that will automatically do that. OK, I'm logged into my new site. I will. Uh, add new. I'm just going to organize my things here. OK, so I'm going to install our um, Altus Accelerate plugin. Excuse my typing. If anybody looking, thinking, oh, I'm making a lot of typos, I must be very nervous. Um, in actuality, that is just how I always type. Uh, so you will have to just put up with the uh, very uh, frustrating <laughs> typing. Um, OK, so I've installed the Altus Accelerate plugin to use that. Uh, to connect it to an Altus Accelerate account, we have a service running behind the scenes for Accelerate, providing all of the AI and analytics uh, capabilities and, and things like that. Um, OK, so that's done. I've connected my Altus Accelerate account. I'm already logged in in Altus Accelerate, so I don't have to do that. Now, I'm not going to demo all of the capabilities of Altus Accelerate here. That's what you can all see up on the left. I'm just going to showcase some of the recent AI additions that, that we've added. Um, so I'm going to add a new post. Skip this. This is obviously all a brand new uh, install. So um, I have to go through a couple of 
pieces. So I'm going to write a post on uh, my favorite sport, um, snooker. Uh, maybe some of you don't know what snooker is even or anything about it, but uh, you're going to have to watch me talk about it for a little while. Um, OK, so I'm going to call my post my upcoming local snooker league. And um, I can insert a new type of block here called an AI generation block. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say uh, make a, a league table for six people because I've got six friends that I know that are going to be uh, playing in this league. So when I've submitted that, it sent that query to our uh, AI backend and it is streaming in the response. And that is able to you know speak Gutenberg, so to speak, to create uh, Gutenberg blocks and all that kind of thing. Um, OK, so that looks good. That is what I wanted. However, I'm going to ask it to um, change the names uh, to Joe, Sarah, Dave, Chloe. I saw we have a Chloe in the chat, but I'm missing the accent on the E. Sorry, because uh, I don't want to spend ages trying to find that. OK, so uh, I should be able to you know, manipulate the content, the current context of, of my query. And that's that's perfect. That is exactly what I wanted. Um, OK, so I'm going to add a new uh, AI block here. And I'm going to say, uh, hype the upcoming league, uh, Sarah won last year. We'll see what it comes up with there. Um, OK, perfect. The upcoming league soon is just around the corner, yada, yada. That's good. Um, I didn't want it to give me another table, but uh, whatever. That's fine. These are all just Guden blocks, so I can remove those. I can accept that. That looks great. Um, and because the AI has the context of the whole post that I'm uh, writing here, then um, I can also ask it to do things like uh, make a list of all the players. So obviously be reading this post and be able to kind of synthesize that back to me. Um, Paul, your question chat, no API key required. No, no API key is required. This is using um, uh, our own kind of hosted AI stack. So um, yeah, it's completely free. No open AI subscription required or, or anything like that. Um, OK, so it's pulled my names of, of people in. Um, so. That's not exactly what I wanted, though. One thing that I like to use uh, AI for is for like column stuff, because it's quite laborious to to do that um, with with Gutenberg kind of clicking around and, and all of that. Um, so I'm going to say, turn that into six columns with a placeholder image for each. And I'll let that uh, do its thing. Um, a question chat, are you passing the whole JSON when you query to maintain the history or does the model have memory? How it works is it, the model is technically stateless. However, you do keep track of the conversation. So every time you post a new message, you're pasting the whole conversation up until that point in, into the model. OK, perfect. So I will update those for profile photos for people later, but that kind of gives me something uh, to work with. Um, OK, so let's say, uh, just write a normal paragraph now. Um, if you don't know how to play snooker, uh, don't worry. Uh, here's a primer. OK, so on there, I'm just going to click this magic button and say make longer. And, and uh, I'm just going to have the AI write that for me. So it, it's generally quite good at completing. And you know, it's, it's already got the idea of the whole post, that kind of thing. OK, that looks good. Um, I think I'm just going to accept that. Let's um, I'll make this look a little more pretty, just for demo purposes. I'll group that, add some padding, let's add a background color, uh, some radius. OK, looks great. Um, OK, so I, I've got this other button up on the top right here, which is an AI chat, so I can use like a AI assistant next to me to be able to, uh, you know, interrogate, ask questions, ideas. So I could say something like, um, what else could I add to my post? Get some ideas, for example. OK, you can include a brief history of local snooker league. OK, you can include some background. You'd be interested to interview some of the players. You include information how people can attend the league. OK, cool. You can create a prediction section where you predict. OK, OK, cool. Um, uh, back to information. 
Okay, so I'm going to say um, also write me a schedule for the week. Perfect. Okay, so in this case, you know, I will probably change all of this information. Maybe the, uh, you know, specific weeks aren't what I want, but the general idea of all of these pieces of functionality is like, give you something to tweak, I th think is, is a lot better than start with a blank page. And that's, you know, generally again, how assistive AI I think is uh, most, most useful. Um, another thing that it's very good at is now I have like the contents of my post with, you know, the general outline and that kind of thing. Um, AI is very good at doing things like summarization and derived content. So things like, um, uh, excerpts, what should your share to Twitter, you know, description be that kind of thing. Um, it's really good at that kind of summarization. So for example, we just have this button here for write it for me. We have a bunch of those throughout the UI we support, uh, as well so yoast uh, meta descriptions and uh facebook sharing and things that will also have that um another capability of um how to accelerate is being able to run a b tests on a lot of different content one of those things is post titles for example and again i can have it write post titles for me because it knows what the current title is it knows the text ai is quite good at, at generating variants and again i can kind of choose my traffic percentage that i want and run that test and and all of that so that's um uh yeah an, an area where we're fairly focused is um around experimentation testing personalization overlaying ai onto those kind of things can really speed up the amount of effort that's needed because typically a blocker to people doing things like personalization is they don't want to go through the laborious process of writing many variants of, of content and things like that um okay so i'm going to quickly demo a couple of upcoming unreleased things as part of that as well so uh let's just quickly uh i think it's this yes that's right so here's a local install that i have and i'm just gonna very hopefully quickly copy uh this one across so i can show you a couple of other features here um one of those is the ability to do images that we've been experimenting with so when i insert the ai block i can actually choose image here i can say uh snooker balls crashing into each other close up wide angle macro let's say and that is gonna currently this is using um dolly behind the scenes which is probably not actually the uh like most state-of-the-art image generation it was just kind of the quickest one that i could uh use at the moment with with an api but it's it's fairly easy to switch that out um okay perfect happy with that for demo purposes um let's also create another one at the top uh for uh, a close-up of a snooker table green cloth um give give it some keywords atmospheric dark or something like that choose image and there we go while that's generating um Another thing that that uh, we've been experimenting is with the completions uh, capability. So, for example, when I'm typing in a paragraph bot block, uh, you may have seen this in like Google Docs or something. Is oh, there we go. My image is finished. Not not the best image to be honest, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna roll with it anyway because um, I don't have time here to do some variants. That's typically a thing that you need to do uh, need to be prepared to do with image generation is. Uh, you know generating a few versions of of these things um so back to the paragraph um that's definitely not what i wanted <laughs> i'm not sure what, what's happening here a live uh live bug um i can accept that by pressing uh tab and uh yeah you can just generally get an idea this has gone totally haywire here so apologies for that um you can kind of get an idea of what we're trying to do here um with this unreleased feature about um, kind of just always providing you an, uh, a default ahead um, that you can accept and then tweak rather than kind of having to start from 
uh, zero every time. So um, if I publish that, let's have a look quickly. And voila, there's my post all generated by uh, AI in the space of a couple of minutes. Um, OK, so let's uh, skip back because we don't have much time. Um, how, how long do we have? About uh, five minutes. OK, so let's see how we get through here. Um, another thing that I wanted to demo is what we've been experimenting with around semantic search, which is a little bit different to the generative stuff in, implemented into Gutenberg. And this is just all prototype phase. So we have a thing called the Human Made Handbook, which is a public uh, website, handbook.hmn.md. It's a WordPress website with content. And it details like what it is like to work at Human Made, what are our HR policies and, and things like that. Um, so we built an experimental bot, basically, which would allow people to ask questions of our company uh, policies and, and information and that kind of thing. So, um, for example, uh, if I say, how many holidays do I get? Uh, it will try to provide you an answer for that. And uh, here it's told me, um, according to the holiday policy, you're entitled to X, Y, or Z. And it's linked me to those documents. Um, and this this answer that is provided, that's not direct text from the documents. That's actually you know synthesized that on the fly. And I can also get a little bit smarter with that. So I can say, I've worked here for five months. How many holidays have I banked? And again, it will be able to discern that for you, right? It will say, uh, since you've worked here for five months, your holiday will soon calculate pro rata, yada, yada, yada. So it's reading the documents that it's found that's related. And then it's, it's using the language model to provide them with an answer. Um, obviously, with the disclaimer uh, that those could be incorrect, and you should check the source material to make sure. Um, oh, skip to page. So how, how does this work? Uh, I'll, I'll quickly give a, a demonstration of that. So um, it's really in two parts. So there's the indexing of all of the information, and then there is the searching of it. So to index the information in the WordPress site, uh, we put all of that information into Elasticsearch who's using the great Elastic Press plugin by 10up. As part of that indexing, we also store the embeddings for all of the documents. Now, embeddings are um, a, uh, a fairly novel approach to uh, doing search that's AI augmented, or augmented. So what that does is for any document that you're going to index, it will come up with kind of a numerical representation of what is that document about. And the way that, that technically works is it's like a dimension of round, around like 1600 dimensions of whereabouts is this content positioned in multi-dimensional space, let's say, of what it's about. So let's say I had a document that was about uh, cats or something that have one position in this um, uh, 1600 dimension space. Uh, if I had an article about a dog, that would be probably relatively close to this article about cats. And if I had one about Jupiter, that, that would be quite far away. Um, so that's how, um, that, that, that's how we index the content. So then when you search for something like how many holidays do I get? Well, it transforms that search query again into embeddings. So then it can do a search and find, say, find me documents that are similar to this embedding. So it's going to find you a few documents that are related to, you know, holidays and and uh, thing and time off and things like that. Because it's it's going to create those associations. And then we feed the results, the top three results of that search query into the large language model and basically say, given these three documents, what is the answer to this question? Um, and the reason why you have to do that is because typically large language models are limited in how much context you can give them. So you can't just say, here's every page of my website, uh, you know, 100,000 articles, please tell me the answer to this question. Uh, you, you need to narrow it down. So this is kind of a technique to be able to get answers to many more questions uh, than the, the LLM would typically be able to understand at once. Um, I'll, I'll do a, 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 another very quick demo. So this is something that I threw together. It literally took, I think, you know, less than an hour to code up in total. It's a interactive WP CLI command that will write WP CLI commands for you. So you can ask it natural language things like show my users and it will write you a a WP CLI command for that, and it'll allow you to run it. Or I will be say, show, you know, list my posts, but only the published ones. And again, it will write you a CLI command that actually does that. So um, a, you can use that for any, uh, you know, core C CLI commands like creating users. You can guide it because it's a it's a conversation, and that's really 
the breakthrough, I think, of large language models is, is being able to have a conversation and modify and things like that. And this uh, little screencast here is just, you know, showing just another way that you can take uh, these generative AI capabilities and apply them to existing capabilities. And, and you may be surprised at how many interactions we have with a computer that um, actually benefit from this kind of interface. Uh, so there's there's just, a, I don't know, all, almost every feature and, and capability of WordPress that I can think of, I can think of, well, what would a good augmentation to that be? And I think uh, that's that's a, a probably what the midterm, I think, of AI and WordPress probably means before some further future um, uh, kind of, you know, AI first approach to, to the CMS. But that's probably a, a story for another day and, and certainly not uh, something I have time for um, today. Um, so that's uh, that's me. Uh, search Altus in your WordPress dashboard under the Add Plugin screen. You can give uh, a try everything that I demoed in Gutenberg today. That's free to use. Uh, yeah, just click and go. Very simple to do. Uh, happy to chat and answer any questions in the chat or reach out to me on Twitter or uh, Mastodon address there uh, or anywhere else you can find me. I'm very happy to. Yeah, uh, just um, answer questions about how any of this stuff works, thoughts on the future of where this stuff is going, all of that. But um, that's all I've got time for. And I think Tom is here to uh, usher us on to the next one. Are you there, Tom? I am here. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Joe. Oh, look, we've got some fancy features. I've moved you to stage left. Um, thanks very much for that. Yeah, I think we're just uh, setting up the next session now. Um, and so I think what I'll suggest is if folks have got questions in the chat, feel free to ask those and I will um, leave Joe uh, to answer those. And then once we're ready uh, with the next session um, where we're going to be hearing from uh, from Miriam uh, talking to us about uh, how Elementor uh, are already adopting AI, um, we will we'll automatically pull people over. Uh, to that new uh, session. Uh, and so uh, if folks have questions, uh, drop them in the chat. Joe will have a few minutes to answer those and uh, I will wave goodbye and see you See you all uh, after that in the next session. Cool, thank you. Okay, you should now uh, have the stage to yourself, Joe. Can you hear me, Miriam, even if you can't see me? I'll jump back in because I think I'm available to talk anyway. Altus Accelerate is the plugin, Alvaro, yes, that is correct. Altus Accelerate is the plugin. Do you think software engineers are in danger of losing their jobs? Um, no, I do not currently. I think that AI is great for productivity, increasing the amount of productivity that engineers can have, but I found it most useful being a code director, if you like, and having the AI write a lot of boilerplate stuff for me. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's where my current thinking is, is uh, it can make us all a lot more productive, but. I certainly haven't seen it write code that I would just want to copy and paste and run uh, in production. Okay, I'm just talking to people behind the scenes here to check exactly how long I've got. I think it is time to head to the next session so uh, everybody can head to the lobby and then I believe they get pulled through to the next one. Um, thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>